first on Fox 5 News at noon. Authorities are ramping up the search for a missing seven-year-old girl from Canton. Joralee Riviera vanished from her apartment complex playground Friday afternoon while in the care of a babysitter. Right now, Sky Fox 5 is overhead in Canton as police comb the area looking for this little girl. Fox 5's Patty Pan joins us now live on the ground with more on the stepped up efforts to find her. The operation out here definitely kicking into high gear this morning as state and federal officials join in on the search. Now, in addition to offering a $5,000 reward for the safe return of this little girl, authorities have just released this poster. As you can see, three different photos of the little girl, hoping someone out there has seen her. This was a scene at the command center early Monday morning as the search for Jarelli Rivera resumed. On the roadways, it's hard to miss signs like this. The search now going on day three is intensifying as state and federal officials are brought in. Among them, the child abduction response team, also known as CART. We are just an assisting process. They're helping us take the investigation uh, to another, other levels. Uh, and, you know, in any investigation, uh, you know, if you're the only one doing it after a short period of time, you get focused in, you need some new ideas, you need some new fresh mind. Detectives tell us Jarelli Rivera, a student at Canton Elementary, disappeared from the River Ridge apartment complex playground around 5 Friday night. What began as a missing person case turned into a possible abduction Saturday afternoon. Jarelli's family tell Fox 5 they are waiting for her safe return. I want to say that I love her and I miss her very much. Fox 5 was at the River Ridge apartment complex Sunday night as crime scene investigators searched Jarelli Rivera's family minivan, taking pictures and removing items from the vehicle. But anything like that is just a standard practice. Uh, we're going through anything we can. Any, you know, we've been through their apartment. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to go through their cars. If there's any other cars out there that we can go through. We did a roadblock. We searched cars going in and out over the weekend. Authorities say time is against them, but they are not letting up. Right now, uh, we can't get frustrated and we can't lose focus. Finding the little girl is our main mission. Here's another look at the little girl authorities are looking for. Described as anywhere between three to four feet tall, 80 pounds, wearing a pink shirt, blue jeans, and black boots. Now, I do want to mention that authorities did tell us that the teenage babysitter who had been watching this little girl at the time of her disappearance told authorities that the last time she saw uh, this little girl was when she ran inside the apartment to say that she was grabbing some drinks for some friends. Well, we have confirmed with authorities that yesterday they did find four Coke cans behind one of the buildings at the apartment complex. We're told two full, two empty. Those are being analyzed as we speak. Now, anyone with any information being urged to call a tip line, that number is 770-704-7074. That is the latest in Can Patty Pan, Fox 5 News. All right, Patty, thanks. And, of course, we will keep you updated on this developing story. The department and the GBI during a, doing a search of a dumpster which was removed from the apartment complex where the victim disappeared. Uh, approximately 90 minutes ago, the investigators discovered the body of little Miss Rivera. Uh, she was uh, in the dumpster. Um, it appears from the examination of the agents at the scene that she was severely beaten. We believe that she was sexually assaulted. Um, we will now have the body of the victim transported to the Georgia Bureau of Investigation crime laboratory where an autopsy will be done tonight uh, by Dr. Chris Ferry, the chief medical examiner for the state of Georgia. At that time, we will then know more about the circumstances of the death of the victim. Um, little Miss Rivera's mother has been notified of the discovery of the body. Um, we will, uh, the uh, FBI is sending up their um, victim witness support staff to work with the mother during this very difficult time. Now, the Canton Police Department, the Cherokee County Sheriff's Department, the FBI and the GBI will now focus on a murder investigation. Uh, we have tremendous investigative resources devoted to this effort, and we will continue uh, pursuing the person or persons responsible for the death of the seven-year-old child. And Sheriff Garrison, Chief. We're, pursu we're pursuing um, several leads. 
but, but uh, quite frankly, at this point, we do not have a uh, strong suspect. We've not focused in on anyone. Uh, we very much need information from the public who may know something about the abduction of this child and the child's subsequent uh, murder. Who killed Jarelles Rivera? Police in Canton are searching for the person who beat, sexually assaulted, and then dumped the seven-year-old's body in a dumpster. Hello and welcome, everybody. I'm Tom Haynes. We have live team coverage of a moving memorial and the police investigation. Fox 5's George Franco is with those who gathered tonight to remember little Jarelles. But we begin with Fox 5's Chris Shaw, who has the latest on the autopsy conducted late tonight. Chris. And Tom, investigators tell me that autopsy has confirmed a lot of their initial thoughts on this case. They say that this little girl was, in fact, severely beaten and sexually assaulted. Right now in the building behind me, investigators are at work, and they will work through the night trying to find her killer. The roadblock commuters ran into Monday night. Only reinforced anxieties in this community, knowing investigators are no longer looking for a little girl, but instead for her killer. This is going to be a very, very uh, horrendous crime. I am convinced of that after having observed the body. The discovery of seven-year-old Jarelli Rivera's body Monday in a dumpster at her River Ridge apartment complex has given investigators some insight into her killer. They now believe she was abducted, attacked, and murdered without ever leaving this complex. Her body, they say, was left only 100 yards from her home. It appears from the examination of the agents at the scene that she was severely beaten. We believe that she was sexually assaulted. According to investigators, Jarelli was last seen playing here Friday evening. Monday, GBI investigators collected evidence at the building next to where Jarelli lived and put crime scene tape up around a basement door to the building where investigators worked for much of the day. Fox 5 has learned this location is one of several in the apartment complex being looked at as a possible crime scene. At this point, detectives say they've conducted many interviews but have no strong suspect. Child death is always a terrible thing, but a child who dies under extreme violence is, is the absolute worst thing that can happen to a human being. The building behind me here in Canton is now the headquarters for this murder investigation. At 10.30 tomorrow morning, there will be a press conference with the GBI, local law enforcement, and the FBI. They will go over a number of developments from overnight, and they will have much more on the cause of death for this little seven-year-old girl. Reporting live in Canton, Chris Shaw, Fox 5 News. Such a sad story, Chris. Thank you. People who live in the River Ridge Apartments gathered tonight for a candlelight vigil, the playground where little Jorelli's disappeared. And that is where we find Fox 5's George Franco. He's live there tonight. George. Tom, heartbreak tonight here at the River Ridge apartment complex in Canton after the body of seven-year-old Jarelli Rivera was discovered. It was a silent candlelight vigil in the rain for seven-year-old Jarelli Rivera at the playground where investigators say she disappeared Friday afternoon. I see now that everybody just loved her and... Um... Like I said, just, you know, try to keep your children safe. After the child's body was found, a lot of people dropped off mementos at the playground not far from Jarelli's apartment as fears linger about her killer still on the loose. I just don't understand how somebody could do something like this. And it terrifies me. You know, I'm scared to let my kids go anywhere. I don't, I don't trust anyone. A friend of Jarelli's family tells us they are very distraught. I have no words to explain, you know, what's going to the family, what we're all feeling. But the only thing I do ask to pray for, for the father, the mother, and the family. A family grieving with so many others who keep asking that question, why would somebody take the life of Jarelli Rivera? Uh, just a week ago, she was giving everybody hugs and giving them snacks and everything. She didn't deserve to die. She was a really nice girl. And still too soon to say what the funeral plans are for 7-year-old Jarelli Rivera, but this is lighting up on Facebook tonight. It's called Light Up Canton for Jarelli. Uh, it is, says that tonight at 8 o'clock and until tomorrow at 7 in the morning, we are, quote, turning our porch lights on in memory of Jarelli Rivera. 
Let's show this family that we care, and let's show this killer that we are all united until he is hunted down and brought to justice. Live tonight in Canton, I'm George Franco, Fox 5 Let's News. Let's hope that happens soon, George. Thanks. Police need your help finding Jarelles Rivera's killer. They are asking anyone with information to call Canton Police at the number that you see there on your screen. It is 770-721-7852. And be sure to stay with Fox 5 as we follow the very latest developments in this case. Cheryl, thank you. Today, investigators plan to talk about the steps they're taking to find the killer of a seven-year-old Canton girl. Jarelli Rivera's body was found yesterday after days of searching. Good Day Atlanta's Mark Teichner has more. We very much need information from the public. State troopers set up a roadblock outside the River Ridge apartment complex in Canton. Inside, GBI agents collect evidence from a potential crime scene located in the basement next to the building where Jarelli Rivera lived. The seven-year-old's body was found in a dumpster only a hundred yards away from the playground where she vanished last Friday. It appears from the examination of the agents at the scene that she was severely beaten. We believe that she was sexually assaulted. An autopsy on the body has been completed. Investigators say they don't think Jarelli ever left the complex. And while they've talked to many people, they don't have any suspects. Child death is always a terrible thing, but a child who dies under extreme violence is, is the absolute worst thing. Everybody just loved her. Last night, friends and neighbors held a silent candlelight vigil at the complex playground. A family spokesperson asked people to pray for Jarelli's parents. I have no words to explain, you know, what's going on for the family, what we're all feeling. A makeshift memorial has also popped up in the playground where Jarelli was last seen, as residents and friends try to comprehend the uncomprehendable. I just don't understand how somebody could do something like this, and it terrifies me, you know. I'm scared to let my kids go anywhere. Just a week ago, she was giving everybody hugs and giving them snacks and everything. She didn't deserve to die. She was a really nice girl. That was Good Day Atlanta's Mark Teichner reporting. Authorities plan on holding a news conference. That'll be at 1030 this morning in downtown Canton. Mark. The brutal death of little Jarelli has many asking why. Could it have been prevented? For answers, we turn to Nancy Chandler, the director of the Georgia Center for Child Advocacy. It's the center's work to help children who are victims of sexual and physical abuse. The agency also works with parents. Nancy, a lot of us are having a hard time wrapping our heads around what happened to this little girl. How do we make sense of it? How could someone do something like this to a child? Well, I think we have to be aware of the fact that there are a lot of people who do target children for very horrible, horrible crimes. Uh, we know that one in four girls and one in six boys will be sexually abused before the age of 18. Many of those are, are abused by adults who are well known to the child. Uh, but there are the stranger abductions. And so, I, you know, I, I think we just have to be real aware that that, that children are terribly at risk in our society today. Well, certainly we want to do something to protect them, to try to keep them safe. Uh, what do you recommend? I mean, we can't always know everyone that lives next door or right. on the other street. A child needs to be under adult supervision, and somebody needs to be, you know, keeping an eye out for our kids. But, you know, what I would most strongly recommend is that any adult should be trained in preventing child sexual abuse. Um, we have a prevention program at our center, but um, it's offered all across the state of Georgia. And what we hope is that all adults will be trained to learn to recognize the signs, the symptoms, know how to react and respond. Um, I think prevention is always our number one goal for for. Uh, protecting our kids. Those numbers you cited, one in four girls, one in six yeah. boys will be sexually assaulted before they're 18. Right. That sounds incredible. That's such a large number. Well, and, it, and it's been proven over and over and over again. There are a number of courses that are offered, everything from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children to our local program. But, you know, we need to empower children, but we have to empower adults to protect those children. Can you give us a few pointers in terms of what parents can do to try to keep their kids safe? Well, I think you need to tell uh, your children that not everyone, not every adult is a trusting adult.
Um, and it may be somebody in your family. We need to talk to our children about the realities of the world. Uh, you know, we, we want our kids to be in a safe environment, in a, in a protected place. But, and, and we know things can happen anywhere. Right. And this is just such a tragic, tragic, horrible situation. I think it, it breaks all of our hearts. The Georgia Center for Child Advocacy Services, DeKalb and Fulton Counties. Similar organizations are available across the state. But again, Ms. Chandler says protecting our children starts at home.